Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Jackson Crawford, and I am here in Helsinki, Finland, at the headquarters, world headquarters of Varustaleka, with Sauli, who is going to talk to me a little bit about Finnish and uh, my experience trying to learn some Finnish since uh, Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> I guess. I think so. And it's Wednesday now. So I have fairly limited experience with this language. Uh, that is to say, five or six days of experience with learning this language. Uh, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit because being, well, positioned where it is, people expect Finland to have a language that's closely related to, well, Swedish, when in fact the languages are completely unrelated. So we're going to talk a little bit about some features of Finnish. Uh, you'll get a chance to hear some Finnish and um, what it's like to try to learn a language that's not related to any other languages that you know. Cold. All right, so first of all, Sally, tell us a little bit about who you are and what your experience with languages is. What what do you know and why do you know it? Um, my experience with the uh various languages is that uh, I began elementary school in the Netherlands. My parents were living there, so I uh, studied Dutch uh, for two years. And uh, when we moved back to Finland, I studied uh, German as well as English in a primary school or elementary school. And uh, since then, I've been living in uh, different countries, for example, in Hong Kong for a couple of years where I studied Cantonese. I have this, uh, would you say, principle or idea that if you're living somewhere, it is prudent to learn the local language. Yeah, I feel the same way. In fact, when I even just visit a country, I feel like I am obligated to try a little bit. I mean, I don't know how it comes across me just trying to speak little bits of Finnish here and there, but you know, hopefully it's uh, I don't know a sign of respect or something is how I intended. I think most people would take it that way, and uh, if anyone disagrees, they would be probably in a minority that you don't need to mind. Okay, yeah, I've actually found uh, people have been very receptive of it, even my tiny little attempts here and there. Yes, um, when you're around Finns they might be very quick to switch to English. Uh, one of the reasons might be that uh, when a Finn has learned English, uh, they are eager to show it off. Mm. Uh, whereas with uh, in some countries, the case might be that uh, people are very, very reluctant to speak English if their native language is uh, German or French, for right, example. Right. Well, and, and another thing that I was told is uh, people are used to talking to other Europeans in English, but it's more of a test of your English to talk to an American or something like that. So they want to speak English with a native English speaker. Uh, we like to speak English to pretty much anyone because there's only a bit over five million of us. So mm. it's a sm small language and there are not really other languages that are related to it. So there are, we just speak Finnish amongst ourselves and with anyone else in the world, it's practically English that mm. we speak. Um, it used to be more Swedish and German and Russian, but uh, English is uh, virtually the second official language in Finland. Right. Yeah, you clearly see English all over the place. I mean, the airport is basically an English-speaking airport, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, around Helsinki, it seems like probably half of the business names even are in English. Um, Varastalika being a pretty interesting exception to that, given that you have such an international clientele. Yes, the um, it can be annoying sometimes as a as a Finn to see Finnish companies and uh, Finnish people communicating to other Finns in English, and uh, I think uh, the French are onto something when they uh, limit it. I, I think they're a bit more protective about the language, mm -hmm. and uh, it wouldn't have to be so that uh, we are speaking. English to other native Finnish speakers. Yeah, I see this in other parts of Scandinavia as well. I think 
probably the country with the least amount of English, like within its borders, might be Sweden. But then Sweden is the biggest one. So, mm. but as I said, Finnish is really, really different from those other languages spoken in Scandinavia. It's not even Indo-European, right? Swedish is literally more like Hindi than it is like Finnish. Um, there's a long history of contact between Finnish and Indo-European languages. So you do see a fair amount of vocabulary that's even actually extremely old uh, from Indo-European languages, especially um, there was some kind of contact between Proto-Finnic, the ancestor of Finnish and Estonian, and Proto-Germanic, the ancestor of English, Swedish, German, etc. And so there's some really cool places where, because Finnish actually hasn't changed terribly much in the last 2,000 years relative to some other languages. We have some words that are kind of like fossilized in Finnish that are Proto-Germanic. So the most famous example is the word for king, which is kuningas. Right, which is in Proto-Germanic essentially the exact same thing. Um, another one is actually in the name of this very company because the first word there, which is Baruste. related to uh, the ancestor of the English word ware, like in warehouse. Yes. So that's pretty cool. Um, another one that's really noticeable is kalpa for shop. Kalpa, yes. Yeah. You can turn pretty much any word uh, into Finnish by adding an I to um, to the end of it. For okay. example, instead of laser, we say laseri. I've noticed instead that. Instead of banana, we say banani. And even my name uh, would be King, King Saul, but with an I in the end, Saul. Right. I've, I've noticed that. That's interesting. It seems like Finnish does prefer words to end in vowels. Yes. And, and you know, there's obviously exceptions. But it's such a strong characteristic that even uh, pretty obvious borrowed words like laser mm -hmm. get that, and it like it makes it more Finnish somehow. Mm. I think that's pretty cool. But Finnish also is uh, tends to make up its own words for things pretty often, right? Um, like an example, I was talking to Annabelle about Estonian, um, and she was telling me that smartphone in Estonian was basically like. You know, uh, I can't remember what exactly the word for smart was, but basically it was just that plus telephone. But that Finnish maybe mm -hmm. had a word that was a little bit more. A smartphone in Finnish would be alupuhelin, which is liter literally intelligence and phone. Mm -hmm. But the word telephone but... isn't borrowed, is what I'm saying. Like, it, mm. the Finnish has its own telephone word. Yes. So that's, you know, that, that shows a little bit more, um, I don't know. I don't want to make this seem like I'm making some political statement about Finnish, but it's independent that way, like a little bit of an independent spirit to the language, not not just borrowing all the same words that everybody uses. Could be like that. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, Finnish translations of, uh, for example, technical jargon when it comes to computers, like for downloading something or um, or uploading something. We do have actual Finnish words for those, hmm. but I think many professionals in the in the IT business use the English words uh, because, uh, well, it's a it's a very international environment. Of course, but we actually have uh, words that would uh, be Finnish words for those. Hmm. Like, uh, what's an example of that? Uh, well, for example, downloading in Finnish would be imuroida. And uh, imuroida is a verb for vacuum cleaning. Huh. Okay. I mean, I guess you're sort of vacuuming a file that you download. In yeah. A way. You're sort of mm -hmm. sucking it into your computer, maybe. Yeah, because as we all know, the internet is a series of tubes. Uh huh. And a series of sucking <laughs> <laughs> most of the time. Mm. Okay, that's cool. And then, you know, one of the things that's so 
well, there's a few things that are really super distinct to me about Finnish, just from my five or six days of experience. So mm -hmm. I'll see what you think about my, my comments about your language here. The hardest thing for me, number one absolutely hardest as an English speaker, is getting used to the difference between short and long vowels. Okay. Right, so for example, I go down to Sotima, mm -hmm. the very cool bar here at Bars de Leca, and I ask for this spruce flavored drink that is called Kusi. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if I make the mistake of making that ooh mm -hmm. short, and I say that I would like a kusi, mm -hmm. I'm in fact asking for urine. That's right. Um, this is really hard for an English speaker to master, even someone who's very conscious about language, mm -hmm. because it's so easy to fall into the habits I have from English where it does not matter how long the vowel is, you're not going to mistake what the word is. If I say, you know, I don't know hand, Mm -hmm. It doesn't make a difference if I say hand or hand. You still hear it as the same word. Whereas in Finnish, that, that can completely change what you mean. Yes. For example, in, in the case of kuusi and uh, kuusi, it's, uh, it's very, very distinct. And for me, it's funny because I've noticed that foreigners have uh, trouble with the long vowels. But you do have words with uh, long vowels. For example, booze. Yeah, that's true. That's you, true. You would never say booze with a short U. Right. That's that's well observed, absolutely. Mm. But if I do say booze, mm -hmm. like short, no one will mistake me for saying something else. Mm. Right. There's no no words in English where that's what distinguishes mm -hmm. one word for, from another. And I, I just think that it's well, it's that's that's definitely the biggest challenge I've had. Um, people complain about the grammar being hard. We'll talk about that in a minute. I think the grammar is actually not that hard to understand it's just a different way to code the same information but that phonological difference between ooh and ooh e eh and e eh, a eh and a eh, mm -hmm. that's hard to pick up and to do consistently when i'm trying to talk at a conversational speed mm -hmm. and i feel like what happens to me is i keep i will say one of these long vowels i will say you know kusi mm -hmm. and i'll feel like i'm going too long and i end up going too short and it still sounds like the short vowel. So now I'm, I, I think I'm getting better at it. I think, do, do, does it sound like I'm saying the right word when I say it, kusi? Uh, I think you're sort of overextending now it. Now I'm overcompensating. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> kusi. Mm, that's long enough. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think there's a, like a more emphasis on the, on the latter uh, syllable. Hmm when the vowel is short. Oh, okay. Maybe it's more balanced tone-wise. Kusi versus kusi. Mm. And um, sometimes uh, people might extend the, the S for no reason. Hmm. And uh, the, the S is uh, short in any case. So if you're able to limit the extension to the vowel only, then you're good. Kusi. Kusi. Exactly. Now the latter one was really good, sounded totally fine to me, but the first one sounded to me like a short vowel, but uh, the S was a little bit elongated. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Because actually in English or Swedish, mm -hmm. that's probably how I would write that word, mm -hmm. right, is with two S's, because that's how we show, you know, short pronunciation typically, is with mm -hmm. doubled consonants. Huh. Well, this has been absolutely my biggest challenge. Is, is, is this issue right here. Um, but of course, one of the things that's really distinct about Finnish as opposed to Indo-European languages is the huge amount of noun endings. Mm -hmm. right? This is kind of famous about Finnish, right? Um, most of, not all, but most of the uh, work that a language like English does with prepositions is done instead by changing the ending of a noun in Finnish. Right. So, for example, uh, in English, um, you know, a woman is here. I talk to a woman. I see a woman. I talk with a woman. The word "woman" doesn't change, but in Finnish, it does. Mm, yes, that would be correct. And uh, it's not done exclusively by conjugation, but uh, that's one way to do it. Mm. And they they are not mutually exclusive. Sure, sure, sure. So you can conjugate a word, but but also use a preposition mm -hmm. or something like that. Like for example, um, 
there's the commutative ending, right? The with ending, mm -hmm. which is something like ega typically. So is it like nice ega, like with a woman? Is that right? Like, how would you say like I am talking with a woman or walking with a woman? How would you say the uh, naisen kanssa? So uh, the word for woman, nainen, is actually in a genitive form. Oh, in genitive there. Okay. Yes, and okay. kansa is the Finnish word for with. Okay, so they're using a preposition. Yes. Okay, well that's a difference from Estonian. That's kind of interesting. Um, what about like uh, well the classic example that you see in all of the, the uh, you know example charts online and in books and stuff is talo house. Talo. Yes. Yeah. So. I am in a house. The word house is different from I go into a house. Yes. Uh, the basic form would be talo. And when you're inside the house, you're talossa. And if you come outside of the house. Talosta. Right. And if you, I don't know, what are some other ones like you? If you're at the house, that would be talolla. Okay. Uh, but uh, that uh, could also mean that you're on top of the house. Okay. And this is, of course, like I said, work that's more or less done by prepositions in a language like English. Pretty much, yes. If you would be under the house, then we would use a preposition that would be talon alla. Mm. And uh, talo, in that case, is uh, in a genitive form. And it's interesting how much work the genitive does in Finnish. Mm -hmm. Because in Indo-European languages like English, Old Norse, Latin, when we talk about the genitive, we're mostly talking about a case that shows possession. Mm -hmm. Now, it does that in Finnish. Yes. But it also serves a lot of the purposes that, say, an accusative does in Old Norse or Latin, showing the direct object. So talon would be the form, I, I assume, used as equivalent to like houses, possessive, like uh, this is the house's roof. Yes, talon with a short vowel. Yeah. Yes. But it would also be the form, I believe, for like, uh, I buy a house. Yes. Yeah. So that's pretty different from uh, from Indo-European, where the genitive would be distinct from that accusative. The genitive has absorbed the function of the accusative mostly, but there's also a partitive case that absorbs a lot of what would be the accusative in an Indo-European language, right? So um, I notice this is different. If I order coffee, mm -hmm. which is poured out of something, partitive, versus if I order um, you know, a, a bottle of beer, which is a mm -hmm. single thing, yes. right? So if I'm not mistaken, if I order coffee poured from a, I guess a care of... Like an abstract amount, yeah. and not, not a glass or a cup or a bottle. Right, that's mm -hmm. partitive, right? Yes, I believe it's partitive uh, when it would be kahvia, mm -hmm. uh, as in a, a part of something. It sounds a little bit like that. Yeah, but then if I order... A bottle of beer mm -hmm. then I use the genitive bottle right or beer I guess mm. if you if you order one beer then then you use the basic form yksi olut okay. uh, but uh, even if you order one bottle of beer uh, you would use the partitive uh, form which is olutta oh, okay. pulla olutta okay so in fact uh, I have not quite picked up on all the shades between partitive and genitive here. That's a challenge. Definitely. That's probably the the most difficult thing about the Finnish language, I would agree. And uh, whenever there's the case that it's um, it's a part of something and there's an abstract amount, it's like uh, could I have some milk or a glass of milk? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a different thing. Yeah. And uh, in Finnish, they are the the conjugation is the same. It's uh, lasi maito or a glass of beer would be lasi olutta, or a bottle of beer pullo olutta, or just generally a amount mm -hmm. of beer would be olutta. Okay, that's. I mean, it's almost. From an Indo-European language perspective, it's almost aspectual, right? Whether you're completing the getting of something or not, because mm -hmm. you're not completing the getting of coffee. There's more coffee mm -hmm. versus yes. I'm completing the bottle of milk. Sort yes. Of.
like I will finish out that the whole thing is for me mm -hmm. right yeah very different structurally anyway in that way now verbs are not too too different from most Indo-European languages um, if you think of something like Latin or Spanish or Sanskrit or Greek where you have uh, personal endings on the verb that show who is doing something yes uh, we actually have uh, I think a really cool example verb uh, you were telling me about a word that is really hard to translate out of Finnish yes um, there are in, in many many languages there are words that are difficult to translate and sometimes uh, we use them as long words for example uh, English speaking people to my understanding use schadenfreude when yeah. you're glad about somebody's yeah, true, uh, misf true. misfortune and it's uh, it's a German word but uh, in Finnish we have a specific word for being able to be outdoors comfortably when it's cold and it's tarjeta tarjeta mm -hmm. okay and uh, if we want to say I am able to be comfortable outdoors mm -hmm. uh, what then is that would, Ma, you, care, would you care to well I can't try so this is okay yes I will try yeah let me let me preface this with something it has been difficult for me sometimes to take an infinitive right like the form of the verb listed in the dictionary mm -hmm. and to anticipate what the root becomes when I inflect it because mm -hmm. I feel like so it's tarjetas like mm -hmm. to be able to be comfortable cold mm -hmm. um but I if I recall correctly when we were talking about this earlier when I say the, the conjugated forms there's like a K that comes in there that's not in the yes it was so, like Ma. so to get you started uh, it would be mina tarkenen when you're talking about yourself okay ma tarkenen mm, yes um, we'll talk about the mina ma thing in a moment maybe because mm -hmm. that's interesting yeah. okay so that's I am able to be comfortable <laughs> um, so you uh, sa tarkenet yes uh, she or he han tarkene Yes, with a long vowel in the end, so tarkene. Hen tarkene. That's right. We me tarkene me. Mm -hmm. uh, Y'all te tarkene te. Yes. Close. Uh, and then they he tarkene vat. Tarkene vat. Yes. Tarkene vat. Yes. Uh, notice that even in these very long uh, verb and noun forms, that the emphasis in Finnish is always strongly on the first syllable but those endings um, or the or the presence of those endings is familiar mm -hmm. to a speaker of Spanish or Latin or, or, or mm -hmm. even kind of German or, 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 or Russian say um, and even the individual endings you know there's an idea that maybe the language family that Finnish belongs to Uralic is ultimately related to Indo-European and I think there's a pretty good case for it um, definitely th that relation would go back way 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 long ago but these verb endings don't seem super different in some ways from indo-european endings i mean a, a nasal and the first person singular uh and the first person plural the dental and the second person singular as a uh, and, and in the second person plural these markers actually seem pretty familiar to me like mm -hmm. not they don't seem if you just showed me verb endings mm -hmm. i might actually say oh that's an indo-european language it actually looks a lot like the verb endings in like greek or sanskrit well wow. for the record I didn't know that well it's it's cool to me because like I'm like oh this is actually not that hard to to anticipate um now one thing that that, that came up there uh, was the difference between when you said uh, Mina and I was saying ma mm -hmm. uh, written finish like formal finish mm -hmm. is actually pretty different from what you hear people speaking Yes, we we say kiriakieli, which is uh, liter literally book language, mm. and then uh, puhekieli, which, which would be spoken language, or yleiskieli, which would be common language. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, there are several differences. For example, uh, when you were saying me tarkenemme, uh, which would be we are able to endure the cold comfortably. Um, we don't often say it like that. We rather use the passive form. Oh, okay. What mm. does that sound like? 
Daryadan. Okay, quite different, mm -hmm. actually, and in fact, not even the same form of the root. Yeah. That's right, Tarkenemme, Tarjetaan. It goes back to Tarjeta, the, the basic form. Yeah, but only in the first person plural, only with we? Um, that would be the passive, but we only use it in the in the plural, first person plural. Huh. That's, that kind of thing is, is definitely difficult mm. to anticipate, mm. but it's interesting. The, the passive form is assumed to be we are doing something. Huh. And quite often uh, when, when we speak the language, uh, we use the passive form instead of uh, we are doing. Uh, if you take it literally and translate it, we're actually saying that th something is being done. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe in formal written Finnish, that's what it would mean, but not in spoken Finnish. Yes, exactly. That's really interesting. I, I wonder if that originates as a politeness thing. Like I'm, I'm politely, I don't know, almost denying the agency of whatever group I'm in. I, it's, that's probably trying to attribute too much motivation to language change. But that sounds very um, sounds uh, like a polite interpretation. I think it has more to do with the uh, tarkenemme has a lot of syllables, and tarjetan is just a shorter word. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that may may well be. That's it too. that's yeah. my guess. I I wouldn't know for a fact why we use the passive form hmm. instead of the first person plural, but uh, that's my assumption. Quite often we shorten things. Yeah, and I've I've definitely noticed this mm -hmm. because in formal written Finnish, uh, I am is. Mina olen. But you would actually probably normally say. Olen. Would you, you would say Olin? I would just omit the the pronoun completely oh, okay. because it's unnecessary because Olin already tells us that it's the first person singular. Okay, now that's actually pretty different from what my my main Finnish teacher Yune says because mm -hmm. she mostly says like mo is what I hear from her. Moan. Yeah. Okay, that would be a specific dialect thing. Right. That's yeah. another thing that's interesting about Finnish is there's yeah. some pretty different dialects mm. and people seem to very comfortably speak quite different dialects with one mm. another. Mm. Now she's from southern Ostrobothnia, if I yes. recall correctly. And where are mm. you from originally? Like what uh, region? From the from the capital region. Okay. Yeah. I was about to say actually maybe that would be the Netherlands if I say originally, originally. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I began my school there, but uh, up to that point I had lived in uh, Hubinka, which is about uh, 50 kilometers north okay. of Helsinki. And uh, I'm not sure if there's anything specific about uh, the way we speak that would uh, pinpoint us on the map. Okay, that's like, still... Uh, like Ostrobothnian uh, dialect or Turku dialect or, or Eastern Finland dialect. That's still kind of like South Central like Helsinki like yes, yes. Okay. yeah we passed through there on the way to Finnish brutality um, and I wondered when I saw the name if it was related to uh, the word that I hear pretty often Hyvä good mm -hmm. like if it was good something yes uh, jokingly we've called it the good well city hmm. uh, but uh, also Hyvinka you could say that uh, if you if you just add an n hyvinkään uh, we say ei mennyt huonosti muttei hyvinkään and that would mean it didn't go badly but it wasn't that great either hmm. okay but uh, honestly i'm not sure it, the word is definitely there and uh, it might mean something that i'm not aware of but uh, i think uh, i think it's uh, you picked it up well I think Hubin and Huba, the word Huba, good, is definitely in there. And Hubin is well, right? That's like yes. the adverb, like yes. someone does something well? Yes, okay. Hubin. That's, well, this is what I try to do, is I try to pick up these patterns mm -hmm. and, yes. and anticipate and guess, mm -hmm. and obviously I'm going to get things wrong, mm -hmm. but it's how I actually learn. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to learn a language, especially a very unfamiliar language, you have to be willing to make mistakes and potentially embarrass yourself. But it's not really that embarrassing if you're learning from it. Right? It's really a, like a personal thing, um, whether or not you're embarrassed by mistakes. And I've noticed that, um, well, I can't, I won't go there. The, um, 
it's just that uh, some people are more embarrassed to make mistakes and then they uh, don't even try mm -hmm. and when you don't try you get less of uh, chances to uh, get it right well here's As here's well. I'm, I'm gonna do this myself here because I, I heard a great phrase I believe I learned this from Yenu mm -hmm. and I'm I'm not gonna remember it exactly but it was something like Kertaus on Opetean 80 I can't, the third word I'm doing the wrong ending I think but it's like that's very close uh, it sounded to me that uh, opettajan you were say it would refer to a teacher but opinto opinto is, yes opinto aiti opinto yen aiti yeah. opinto yen aiti mm -hmm. opinto yen aiti so mm -hmm. kertaus on opinto yen aiti yes so something like uh, repetition repeated practice is the mother of learning Yes, pretty much that. And uh, mm. the way you say kertaus there, uh, the way you roll the R and the length of the uh, the syllables is very, very good there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm trying. Mm. Um, uh, that's That's been something. Uh, On that note, uh, when we say hyvin, it uh, not only means well, but also very. Hmm, okay, so uh, I'm trying to think of a, another. If something is now. very good, it would uh, you could say it's uh, Hubin huba. Okay. Okay. It uh, it doesn't sound natural like that, but hubin is uh, it's maybe a little bit formal, but uh, it is a word for very something. Oh, neat. Okay. And I also learned uh, tosi. Tosi, yeah. Very. Which is uh, Finnish for true. Oh, okay. So, so like truly. Truly something, not exactly the meaning as I understand it in English, but uh, tosi is uh, very and also true. Okay. Oh. Interesting. I appreciate having that extra information. Mm. I was trying to think of another adjective that I learned, and I haven't actually learned very many adjectives. Um, I, I learned, I want to say I learned an adjective for beautiful that was started with kai, maybe? Like cow? Cow, okay. It's, not, it begins with that. Is it counties? Yes, exactly. Okay, all right. That's right. So, like, and by the way, uh, when we were talking about noun endings, adjectives also change their endings so that um like let's more th more beautiful would be kauniimpi yeah but also like depending on the case of the noun that we're talking about so like um like she is a beautiful woman would mm -hmm. be like kaunis nainen right yes but i see a beautiful woman would be like kaunista nice day uh that would be uh Partitive form, okay. but if you see a beautiful woman, that's genitive. You see kaunin naisen. Okay, so you see that the adjective and the noun change consider their ending changes considerably. Yes, the adjective Very actually noticeable. picks up the the conjugation of the noun you're right. referring to. Right. Now, Finnish has a reputation as being a difficult language to learn, and I think a lot of that reputation comes from the fact that it does not share. Uh, very many structural elements, especially in the noun, with Indo-European languages. But I have found that Finns are pretty encouraging about my attempts to learn. What do you, what do you think about that? What do you think about the relative difficulty of Finnish? Well, my experience with other languages uh, is that um, if you don't pronounce things exactly right, uh, people might have a genuinely hard time understanding you, and mm -hmm. they are they are not. They're not being mean to you. They honestly cannot understand what you're saying. Whereas in uh, in Finnish, uh, I might be biased, but uh, to me it seems that when somebody speaks even very very broken Finnish, they are still able to get the point across. And uh, people, uh, the Finnish people, are trying to understand what somebody is saying, and uh, even if the order of words or the pronunciation is off. Uh, we're very capable of still understanding. Mm. So, uh, so I think that uh, it doesn't mean that Finnish would be uh, a lot easier because of that. But uh, as you said, it might be a little bit more rewarding, mm. and uh, it might be extremely difficult to get it exactly right if you set your bar that high. Right, but uh, but it's sort of it's uh, offset a little bit by the fact that uh, it's forgiving. Mm -hmm. 
And I always tell people not to set their bars that high when they're beginners, mm -hmm. which sounds like I'm being discouraging, but it's the opposite. Perf perfect is the enemy of good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And if you're trying to be perfect, you know, right away with a language that is totally unfamiliar to you, you're just never going to speak it. You're never going to learn anything because you won't allow yourself to make those mistakes that actually allow you to, to learn. Yeah. Um, I have very willingly just dived into making all kinds of mistakes mm -hmm. because I learned from the mistakes. Kertaus on Opetayan. Opetayan's teacher. Opetayan. Okay, I keep saying that. Opetelen. Mm -hmm. Mm, opetelen is I learn. All right, ma opetelen. Yeah. Opetayan. Uh, opinto. Opinto opin is the word you're looking opinto. for. Opinto. Okay. Opintoyen. Opintoyen. Yes. Opinto that's right. It. Kertas on opintoyen. It. Mm -hmm. Repeated practice is the mother of learning. Mm, that's right. The um, one thing that I thought of is that what that might be interesting is the is the pronouns. Mm -hmm. Uh, people talk about pronouns these days a lot, and uh, it's um, oh, sure. it could be a could be a hot topic for some, mm -hmm. and uh, other people might be sick of them. But uh, Finnish is, uh, to my understanding, famous for having the third person han, right. which has no sex, whether we're talking about a man or a woman or or someone else. Uh, we still use the same pronoun. Right. But. Uh, this is the official literal uh, book language version of things. Uh, when we actually speak, uh, the pronoun we use of other people is it. Se. Se. It. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. And when oh. we're talking about animals, uh, we use han. <laughs> okay, that's kind of fun. So, and, you're, uh, so if you're talking about a dog, that's han. Mm -hmm. But like literally talking about people just casual conversation you just say it yes just the same word That's they they completely switch places in the spoken language and uh, it's exactly the opposite how it goes in the written language interesting. and it's not even a modern thing uh, i read about this uh, some time ago and uh, it has been going on for a long time <laughs> that uh, people are saying it about human beings and a hand about um, animals. Oh, but damn, that's really interesting. Mm. And this is a, a point about Finnish that's well worth making, is there's no gender, right? Mm. This is something Indo-European languages all have distinctions of mm -hmm. gender. English is an extremely rare exception in that English doesn't make gender distinctions about regular nouns, right? Mm -hmm. Unlike yes. in Spanish or French or Icelandic or Norwegian, there's you know no gender distinction between finger and hand. Um, or a car right. or, or a bottle. Right, because like in Icelandic, for example, uh, you know, finger, masculine, uh, hund, feminine, car, bil is masculine, uh, bottle, I guess, flaska is feminine, right? So like these things are just, it, it's pretty arbitrary. Yes. In Finnish that I, doesn't exist. Mm. What I remember uh, from German uh, that was difficult when uh, studying German, was that uh, it sort of seemed arbitrary and you just had to learn a lot of things by heart. But one thing I do remember is that animals very often in German are D, the feminine, mm. uh, but uh, Esel is der Esel, like a donkey. Mm. And our German teacher would say that it's because men are donkeys. Okay, sure. <laughs> but you're, you're right, we don't have uh, that uh, we don't have a distinction in uh, in the pronouns and also not in the in the nouns, except if you're trying to be very archaic, you can add tar to the end of a title. Uh, for example, singer would be laulaja, uh, but a female singer would be laulaja tar. Okay. It's very mm. very rarely used anymore. It's uh, considered old-fashioned by. The majority of people and not only a small amount of people who are trying to change things mm. but it's a, it's a very there is a there is a suffix that we can use but it's rarely used seems like truss in english like if you said singer versus songstress or something like that really yes. archaic and weird sounding now yeah. yeah but the fact that even that difference between he and she isn't present mm -hmm. in finnish like as it as it is in english um, you know, in English, that's a residual part of the old Indo-European gender distinctions. In Finnish, well, in the Uralic languages, on, on, on the whole, Finnish, Estonian, Hungarian, 
and then it's Sami. Um, that that's just not part of the system at all. It's distinguishing genders. Mm. Obviously, there's words for things like man, woman, boy, girl. Yes. But it's not coded into the grammar that you have to refer to someone by a gendered word. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's really interesting mm -hmm. and, a, and a very um, distinctive part of mm -hmm. Uralic grammar. That hasn't stopped people from trying to look for uh, structures in the Finnish language that would indicate uh, oppression against women. Hmm. For example, when a man and a woman uh, get married, uh, in English they become husband and wife. So they're no, no longer man and woman, but husband and wife. So their, uh, should I say, titles change. And uh, in the Finnish language, the man is still a man. And uh, sort of he gets to keep his uh, title, whereas the wife, uh, the woman becomes vaimo, which is <laughs> Finnish for. And somebody was uh, suggesting that uh, this means that the woman becomes part of man and is no longer a woman and somehow loses value but uh, if that were to if that were true then would uh, the english language be uh, equal in this sense you would think. and and would the french language uh, oppress men because in the french language man and woman and husband and wife is that the, the woman remains a woman i'm not sure mari femme and uh, I'm not sure about the words, but I've understood that in the French language, uh, when a man and a woman are married, uh, the man is referred to with a different word than hmm. man. Hmm. I mean, I think that these things, I think people try to read too many value judgments into these things. I think it's kind of arbitrary what a language does this way. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's interesting that you have to dig that far. Mm. to find quote-unquote sexist language in Finnish. Mm. Um, it is, just by virtue of its grammar, very kind of by default egalitarian. Right? I would say so. And I'm not sure if it has uh, reflected the values of our society before or did it just happen to turn out that way. Mm. Um, and... Uh, not only between men and women, but also when we're not referring to objects with a gender, I think it would be uh, very far-fetched to say that uh, Finns are uniquely egalitarian. Mm. Um, I think of it more as a coincidence. Yeah, I think you're right. Mm. Although I do find, for the record, Finland is pretty egalitarian seeming. Um, you know, it just seems like women take a, a large role in public life and from what I've seen? Yes, I would say uh, Finland is uh, very, very egalitarian uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, sexual minorities or uh, men and women and uh, this sort of issues. That's not to say there are uh, not uh, things to be done still, but uh, I think we're in a good position. Uh, on the on the global scale at least and even on the european scale well shall we wrap up this video with some examples of finnish for the audience uh some connected uh sayings more than my broken little sentences here and there <laughs> sure uh maybe if i describe uh, what you're wearing would that be uncomfortable no it's it's fine jackson crawford wears exclusively about us mm -hmm. like a branded clothing <laughs> <laughs> that's right uh jacksonilla on ullan baarin paita joka on ollut ennen, ennen hyvinkin yleinen aluspaita, mutta se on nykyäänkin vielä muotia. And I was saying that uh, you're wearing a grandpa's shirt that uh, used to be an undershirt, but it's still fashionable today. Yeah, I like it. Um, well, thank you, Sally, so much for your time. Thanks for having me. And uh, from beautiful Helsinki, we're wishing you all the best. <laughs>